Hebrews chapter number 11, and then I'm going to read a few verses from Genesis chapter number 6, Hebrews 11, then Genesis chapter number 6, and while you're turning there, let me just encourage you to take advantage of the resources that we have. Um, it's, you know, God has blessed us uh, with some great people, blessed us with a lot of uh, talented, hardworking people, and uh, with a newspaper and now a radio station. Of course, our Bible college is getting uh, officially started this fall. God, is, God has given our church a lot of opportunities, but also with our publications ministry. Uh, take advantage of uh, the things that I've sent you, the books I've sent you, the things available. Um, and, and, and that study guide, for example, is stuff I've taught you, and it's, it's mostly designed to be a college textbook, but um, it might be something you want to have on your shelf, but certainly the book that I send you for free, I send money to send it to you, take advantage of that. And I know, Pastor, I just don't read. I just don't read. Um, you, well, that's, confess your other sins to me, but that's, uh, we ought to take advantage of the resources that we have. And um, uh, please, please, please do that. It'll help you. Of course, if you're going to read, if you only have time to read some one thing, read the Bible, of course. Um, but uh, other resources are always good. Uh, tonight in Hebrews chapter number 11, I'm going to read one verse, and then I'm, we'll go over to Genesis chapter number 6 in just a moment. Read verse number 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. I want you to notice several things about this verse, and then after we pray, we'll look in just a moment in Genesis 6. By faith, Noah, we know the significance of this chapter. Uh, by faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. We see that in verse number 6, we're reminded of that once again. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. You've got to underline that little phrase in your Bible, of things not seen as yet. Something is going to happen that's never been seen before. But how did Noah respond? By faith. Uh, for he, or I'm sorry, uh, yet moved with fear. Something else to notice about our text tonight. He was moved with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Hold your spot there because we're going to refer back to Hebrews 11. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter number 6, verse number 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 13, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Uh, here's a boat that's never been built before and behold, verse 17, and behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Down to verse 22, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Uh, there's the story that we know of Noah, Noah and the ark, uh, the children's Sunday school story. Uh, but it's so much more than that. So we're going to look at Noah and his faith tonight. And the title of my message tonight is this. Faith that had never been seen before. Faith that had never been seen before. I think these simple truths will help us tonight. Father, thank you for another opportunity to open the word of God. And Father, I pray that with the time we have, uh, may the spirit of God uh, help us, instruct us, uh, may we heed what the scripture says this evening, and may these be truths that we apply to our lives to help us better serve you, uh, better please you, and may our faith increase because of it, for it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Most of us know the story of Noah and Noah and the ark, as we refer to it, and how God destroyed the earth because of its wickedness. And he spared, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and that in itself is a message, uh, whose eyes should we be seeking grace? And it's God. Uh, I don't understand Christians who want to find grace with this world. They're not concerned about finding grace in the eyes of God. It's a reminder to us uh, that when God destroyed the world, those that lived to please Him uh, found grace, uh, and there's much that can be said about Noah and his family. 
We know this story and because I think it's familiar to us. And in my case, I had the privilege of growing up in church uh, from the time I was a baby all the way through to till now. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stay with it, I've decided. And I grew up, I've heard the Sunday school teacher uh, teach this. Different Sunday school teachers teach different uh, viewpoints on this and hear from different sources. But I've heard Noah's Noah and the Ark. And what a what a wonderful what a what an interesting Bible story it is. What an important Bible story it is. Uh, but it's more than just a story that we teach children. There's some very very vital and important truths to you and I that can be found in this story and in the life of Noah. Now, most of our outline tonight is going to come from verse number seven. And as we think of Noah in, in Hebrews eleven, as we think of Noah uh, and what we've read, we think of God coming to Noah. And God mentioning that he was going to do something, verse 7, by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. God comes to him, warns him of things, tells him of things that's never been seen before. We know because we have scripture, there's never been a flood before. Never been one since. There won't be another one. You got to put yourself in Noah's shoes. God comes to him and says, this is going to happen. It's never happened before. What's a flood? What's rain? Now, if you live in Florida, you know what both of those things are. Noah didn't live in Florida. He didn't know what rain was. It had not rained. He had never seen this before. So in order for Noah to have faith, he had to have faith that he hadn't had before. He had to have faith that he hadn't seen before. Now, let me use this as an illustration to further drive this point home, one of the privileges we have living in the generation we live in is these, we've got generations before us that we can look to as an example. I'm thankful for the generation before me uh, in general, generation of Christians, but I'm thankful for the generation of preachers uh, before me and then those that I can read about and study about. I'm thankful for the pattern from Scripture now that I have and we have to look at their faith. What did they do in this situation? How did they apply this verse of Scripture when they were going through this? What principles did they uh, uh, fall, fall back on? Uh, they, they lived by faith, and then they made it in that situation. And so, uh, therefore, I can do it, and it gives me additional confidence to do the same thing. But if you're Noah, who do you look to? What pattern do you follow? You can't run to the so-called Christian bookstore and get the latest book of surveys and say, okay, this is what you do in this situation. No, God said, I'm I'm, I'm warning you, I'm telling you of something that has never happened before. So in order for Noah to please God, he had to have faith that he never had before. And Christian is not so different in your life in mind. When we deal with something that we've never faced before, you have to have a faith that never you never had before. One of the wonderful things about faith, and you go through trials, and if you're faithful to the Word of God, God, God of course, is faithful to us, then you know that you're going to be okay. You know that God's going to come through. Oh, I've faced that before, or I've faced bigger than what I'm facing now. God has already proven himself. But there comes along some, comes along some things that we've never de- dealt with before. And we're facing it for the first time. What do we do? We have to have a faith that we never had before. Allow me to use myself and my family as a personal illustration. When our first child was born, we thought we were ready, as every young couple thinks they are ready. And we had to have faith at, to rear our child. We had to have faith to, to, to okay, is this, is this normal, okay? She's not going to die if she does this. She's not going to, you know, okay, she survived this long. And if you are a parent, I see many of you nodding your head because you, you understand Uh, You have to have faith to rear your children. You have to have faith that they're going to live through the day sometime. But that's that's faith you have to have. Our second child, God gave us our second child, Amanda. 
you all, probably every one of you, know the story of Amanda and how the Lord, she was very sick, and the Lord took her home at eight and a half months. After two weeks, basically, of her life, the rest of her life was in and out of a hospital, uh, in, in, in home health care at home. We could not compare that with our first child. So there had to be a faith that we never had before. And in life, God is going to allow us to face situations. He's going to bring things to us. We can apply this as an individual tonight. You can apply this as a family. We can apply this as a church. God will allow us to face things as a church that we've never faced before. We've never dealt with before. You know what we have to have? We have to have a faith that we didn't have before. That's why it's important, Christian, for you to stay warm in your relationship with God. That's why what I preached uh, uh, Sunday night about having a walk with God is so important. Because when you face something that you've never faced before, you're going to have to have a faith that didn't exist before. And in this case, the world had never seen what God was fixing to do to this world. Noah had certainly never seen, never had to have the faith. Imagine if you were Noah and the world is wicked, you see that. Your family is different than the world. Some of us think we have it hard being different in this world. Imagine being Noah in his family, and they were the only ones who were different, the only ones trying to please God, the only one. And God said, uh, Noah, you were going to, this is what I want you to do. And can you imagine his children and Mrs. Noah, when Noah came home and said, guess what? God's told us what we're going to do. What are we going to do? We're going to build an ark. What's that? God's going to send the flood. He is. When's it come? No, it's, that's not a good thing. Oh, okay, we've never, we've never had that before. So, that, so we got to build this, and we've got to do it by specific specifications in front of everyone, for everyone to see. And it's not going to be done overnight. It's not going to be done in a year. It's going to day after day after day. There's a faith that didn't exist before. There's a faith that no one ever had before that now he had to have, but now there's a faith that the world sees that has never been seen before. Let's look at the outline tonight. We'll make a, a, even more of an application. Let me say number one. Everyone can have faith that has never been seen before. Everyone can have faith that has never been seen before. Now, none of us are going to build an ark. None of us are going to prepare for a flood. Noah had faith that he had never, he had never needed before. He had faith that was never seen before because God brought something that he had never brought before. Just like all of us will face things in our life, uh, I, I call them seasons of life. Uh, you move through them in childhood, and in and, and, and high school graduates are fixing to graduate. They're going to move to a new season. And every time you move to a new season, and, and, and then singles get married, and now they're in a new season of life. It's going to change. And you have children. Now it's a new season. And then when your children uh, leave, leave the house, that's when you have the, the celebration. I mean, that's when you have the next season uh, that takes place. And life, life, and with each season comes something new. And you've got to always be willing to have that faith that didn't exist before. But I said, number one, everyone can have faith that has never been seen before. Let me clarify that with another statement, and then I'll explain a little bit more. To somebody, you're the person that has the greatest faith they've ever seen. To somebody. Say, oh, they must not know very many people with faith. But to somebody. You've got faith that they don't have. 
You've got faith that they've never seen before. Everyone can have faith that has never been seen before. I'm convinced of this. The Bible bears it out. And then if you live long enough, you'll be convinced of it as well. God allows you to go through storms like I preached Sunday morning. There's a couple of reasons he allows us to do it. He allows us to go through storms because there's something he wants to do in us. There's something he wants to change about us. There's something he wants to do in our relationship with him. Uh, whether, whether it's changed something about us or we get a greater confidence in him. But there's a second part of why God allows us to go through storms. And that's because there's a world that he wants to show that faith is a real thing. It's an important thing. Why did God choose for the ark to be constructed like the ark was constructed? God cho chose that. That's, that's enough tonight. But the point I want to make about that is it took years. Why, why did it take so long? God wanted that faith on display. So well, that's kind of cruel of God to wipe out the whole world. Well, there's a lot that can be said about that. But for all of those years, there was faith on display that had never been seen before. Uh, I don't know what you might be facing tonight, what burden you might be carrying, what difficulty you might be going through. Um, God, I'll remind you, God knows, but I may not know. Nobody else may know. But somebody, your, your, your spouse may know. Your, you, 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 somebody else in the church may know. The lost world may know. But you have a chance, you have an opportunity to have faith that has never been seen before. And when those opportunities come along, how do we please God? By faith. So when, we, when God brings something to us that we've never had to face before, it is a new way to please Him. Let me say it like this. It's another way to please God. It's a greater way to please God. Boy, if we started over here on my left and went all the way across the room and, and asked a person after person, do you want to please God? Do you want to please God? Do you want to please God? I believe everybody in here would say, yes, I want to please God. And there's less than 50 people in here, by the way. And, and, and everybody would say, yes, I, I want to please God. Okay. Then in order to do that, you've got to live by faith. You've got to be able to live by faith. So... When God brings something new. This whole situation that we've been dealing with for weeks, it's, we've never faced it before. I heard a couple of you talking about when the, when, when the black plague came through when you were a kid, and, and we can't relate to that, but um, just a couple of you were talking about that. I'm just going to look over in this section right here for a moment. But um, no, we haven't faced this before. As a church, as, as, as families, as, as, but you know what has given us an opportunity? Here's a new faith. Not a new faith that's created. It's a new opportunity of faith because it's never, we face something we've never faced before. Everyone can have faith that has never been seen before. What if God, God came to you or God brought to you something that seemed as outrageous and ludicrous as building an ark in your backyard? And then getting all the animals. How much faith would you have? You can answer that question with another question. How much faith do you have when this journey that God has set you on, this life he's prepared for you, you face something that it seems ludicrous and outrageous, makes no sense at all, and sometimes even, God, this, this doesn't even make sense about you. What, uh, how do you handle that? It's an opportunity where everyone can have faith that has never been seen before. Do you think, do you think and I do want you to respond to this question, how many of you think God wants you to grow in your faith? I do. I think we all do know that. So, 
we have an opportunity as new things come to us, as big things, how do we please God? We've looked in this passage of Scripture of how these things were accomplished through faith. So number one is everyone can have faith that has never been seen before. Number two, notice in verse number seven of Hebrews 11, and I'll give you the, 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 the truth. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, notice this next phrase, moved with fear. You say, oh, pastor, if, if I knew a flood was coming, and I knew the earth was going to be destroyed, that would, that would scare me too. That's not what that's talking about. He was moved with fear of God. Not fear of something he's never seen before. He was moved. God said it. I'm afraid not to do it. God ordered it. I'm afraid not to do it. Okay, I know it's Wednesday night Bible study. The preacher's fixing to come out. Why in the world would a Christian be more afraid what this lost world and have more fear of what somebody might say to them than they do disobeying the Almighty God. You know, the promises in this book are true. God does say honor, and this is one that just comes to my mind, honor thy father and mother. There is a promise connected to that, and it is the length of life. Well, I just don't believe that. You better prepay, if you know what I mean. Why, why do we live in fear of what somebody says on social media or what somebody says at work? No, Noah was moved with fear, and I'll give you the second truth now. It was a faith based upon his fear of God. Let's, let's just be real and honest Tonight, none of us are so good of a Christian that we always want to stretch our faith. We always want to do uh, everything that we're supposed to do. But what will prod us? What will prompt us? What will require us to obey God is a fear of God. It's, it's, it's simple. A Christian that would disregard the word of God is not afraid of God. Has no fear of God. The God who controls the beating of your heart. I had no intention of getting off on this, but I think it's good for all of us to be reminded Say, well, well, I know so and so, and and they ignore everything, and I know they're saved, and and nothing is happening. You don't know what you don't know what disease is growing in their body right now. You don't know what date with destiny they are that, that is waiting on them. Why do we have a fear of this? I be God. Boy, the fear of God ought to drive us to our knees. The fear of God and how I fall short and how, and, and by obeying His, and by pleasing Him, Noah got to work. He must have been afraid of the water. No. When God said, I'm going to destroy this world, I'm going to wipe man from off of earth. Noah believed him. And Noah said, I'm going to do what he said, or he's going to wipe me off of the earth as well. See, when Noah heard from God, he believed God. Sadly, we as Christians, we, we pick and choose what we choose to believe or not believe. We need a big revival from the pulpit to the back pew of just a fear of God. Noah feared him. This is so key. You say, it's, we're talking about a faith that's never been seen before. You know what would be amazing in our nation, in our churches, in our homes, in our communities, places where we work, if, if Christians just had a healthy fear of God. God says it. We ought to pay close attention to it. 
close attention to it. It was a faith based upon his fear of God. It was not a fear of terror. Oh, I'm scared, I'm scared. It was a fear of awe. It was a fear because of God's greatness. It was reverential respect for the power and might of God. Christian, how's your respect? Your reverential respect for the power and might of God. The holiness of God. Noah, who was a faith based upon his fear of God. Number three, it was a faith which would deeply affect his family. We see in verse number seven, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Well, this is where every parent ought to pay close attention. Every young couple, every young adult who might have, God may bless you with children one day, or has already blessed you with children. Your faith does matter. Your actions do matter. Well, it, it just affects me. Or, or my family. Okay. What if Noah had not moved with fear of God? Who would have perished? His whole family would have. Who did God come to? He came to Noah. There's still a, a scriptural order in the home. And quite frankly, tonight, I know this is an encouraging, uplifting message on faith, but there's going to be a lot of men who give an account for the destruction of their own children and grandchildren because of their lack of fear of God and obedience to God. Now, God gives all of our children free choice. If they choose to go a different way, it should not be because you let them down the path. Wives, if you've got a husband, he may not be perfect, but I'd rather have a husband who says, we're going to do this book. We're going to live by this book. And if, you're, if, if you have a husband tonight that, that lives by the word of God, you ought to be thankful for that. You should rebel against it. Because it does affect your family. Mom and dad, you face things that your children don't know that you're facing. And sometimes they do get a sense of it and they don't know how they, they watch how you react. It will affect your family. Beyond your own children, it'll affect your family. Just like it's a wonderful thing when somebody gets saved and they're the first to get saved in their whole family, then how that changes the future of that family. It's different. It should never be the opposite way. When you come from generations, and twos, plural, generations, and then cut that faith off. Because what's going to happen is it's, it's not going to continue. It does affect your family. That's why, that's why young people, it matters who you marry. You might want to write this down. This is deep. This is good. If you don't want to marry the wrong person, don't date the wrong person. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. It affects our, our faith, affects our family. He prepared an ark for the saving of his house. Now, if we wanted to get on our spiritual high horse, we could judge the motives of Noah. Well, he just obeyed God because he didn't want his children to drown. And sadly, there are some who would take that, take that route. But can I just say to you, so what if that was his motivation? Can I tell you, I don't understand all that God says in this book. I, I don't, and my flesh does not even like it. But, but I do know that what I do has consequences to the people that I love. And so you, you, you may want to run me out of town after this. I don't always feel spiritual. Say, Pastor, look who I pastor. I don't always feel spiritual. Say, what, what, what do you mean? I, but there's, there, I, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to obey this book. 
I'm not, I'm, I'm not pushing aside. Yes, I want to honor God, but when my flesh is being my flesh, I know there are people who are depending on me in my fear of God, my faith that when something new comes along, I've never had to face before. What are you going to do? I, got, but I guess I better tap into faith that I've never had before. I guess I better have faith in my life that's never existed before because now I'm facing something that I've never faced before. It's going to affect my family. Please, please grasp this. If, if the faith that never has, that's never been seen before affects your family. Number four, and I'm done. It was a faith that would be a testimony to others. What's a testimony to us tonight? This passage that we see tonight reminds us that Noah's actions condemn the world. It's not that the world was condemned by Noah, but that they were convicted by their condemnation by his obedience. Let me explain that. When he was obeying God, there was a message that God was sending as a testimony to the world. Sometimes you read the Bible like every story is in a little vacuum. And if it's in verse 6 and then the verse 13, it happened in the same amount of time that, it, that we read from verse 6 to verse 13 or from one chapter to the next. That's not the way it always spells out. Do you not think in all those years that Noah built that ark, that nobody stopped him? He said, Noah, what are you doing? I'm building an ark. Okay, we'll get back to that, Noah. Why are you building an ark? Well, God said there's going to be a flood. He's wiping off man off of, this, or off of the earth. Oh. Now they have a choice. Do we listen? Do we heed the warning? Or do we reject it? See, sometimes we miss this as Christians. In this world, make no mistake about it. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. It doesn't matter what's going on. This world and our nation includes getting more and more hostile to Bible-believing Christians. More and more hostile. By the way, the Bible says that's the way it's going to be. Sometimes we get frustrated because we face things as a church and as Christians of people that we, we just haven't faced before. Now i got to have a faith that I've never had before. And why is God putting us through this? Why is God allowing this? Because... He's preaching a message to the world around us. There's the faith. You're, you're, if you are a Bible-believing Christian and you have a fear of God, your life preaches a pretty loud sermon. Pretty, it, it, It's conviction. You know, when you back out of your driveway on Sunday... When your neighbors are getting ready to go to the lake, they know where they ought to be. When you get together with family who's not doing right and not living right, and you are, it preaches a pretty loud message. Well, Pastor, we, it was a faith that would be a testimony to others. In order to have faith, you can't see how it's going to end up. In this case, Noah couldn't even get a mental image of what was going to take place. But he had a fear of God, a trust in God. He believed what he could not see. And part of this story is the testimony of faith. One day, the dead is going to be called up before God. Nobody that lived in that time is going to be able to say, God, why would you just destroy us? Why would you not send a message? And God's reply is going to be, I had a man working on an ark for all of those years, and he told you that the world was going to be destroyed. And you laughed at him. You mocked him. You said, well, well, God, we, if there was going to be a conversation, it would go probably like this. Well, God, we didn't know what rain was. It didn't matter. The God of heavens sent you a testimony. The same is going to be true. Not everybody 
who comes in. It's a wonderful thing when, when a Sunday and people are, are coming in. You have those guests that come in, and you can see the conviction of the Holy Spirit on them from the moment they get in the auditorium. And then as we've experienced, praise the Lord, so many times, they get a conviction, that invitation. They come to the front. They can hardly hold the tears back. They trust Christ as their Savior, and their eternity has changed. That, that's worth getting up for on Sunday morning right there. But oh, it's heart-wrenching to have my viewpoint. And you can see the Spirit of God just, just, just twisting. You can see the heaviness in the conviction. And you know that there's a... Because the Lord gets you up early and for some reason puts a burden on your heart for lost people that morning, and you're pretty convinced that somebody lost is in the service when you're standing on the platform during the song service, and then you, you see the conviction of the Spirit of God. And even while you're preaching, you know by the Spirit of God that individual is lost, and the Holy Spirit is talking to them. But they don't respond like those we like to see respond. Okay, sing another verse. Okay, sing another verse. Okay, sing another verse of that invitation. We got any more verses? Well, let's start over, given every opportunity. Every opportunity. You're catching people's eye, and you're doing like this, hoping they... And yep, somebody goes and, and speaks to them and says, Would you like... To? They don't respond. But the day's going to come if they don't trust Christ after that. You were sent a message. You have no excuse. Friend, this is why your testimony, where you work, is important. Because there's lost people there, and the only saved person they know is you. Well, I've, I've never... I've never been a, and I'm way out on the rabbit trails now. I've never, I've never uh, witnessed to them. I've never, and sometimes it's like, I want to say, how could you? You use the same words they use. You talk about the same things they talk about. You act the same way, dress the same way, go the same places. How could you be a witness? And then I, I believe there will be Souls in heaven because of the testimony of God's people. Because the Spirit of God that dwells in you can bring conviction to a lost soul. And they may pull out a gospel track that was left for them. They may recall when they were sitting in Sunday school. Or they may be willing to go to the next service with you. Our testimony matters and we need to have that faith. That's never been seen before. In years to come, the Lord tarries is coming. Someone among us is going to get the dreaded doctor's report. It's just, it's just reality. And we'll pray for miracles as God has done. Hey, Pastor, that's kind of negative, but here's the point. God's going to give you an opportunity to have faith that you've never, never had before. And He's going to let other people see faith that they've never seen before. And it's going to be a testimony to them. I, I, you fast forward till it stops raining 40 days, 40 nights later. Noah and his family get off of the ark. From then on, Noah had credibility. Not with a lot of people, but he had credibility. Why is that? Because he had a testimony of having faith. It's never been seen before. Christian, this is a powerful truth and powerful story and aspect of faith that I don't think we think about. Well, I'm the first one that's ever had had the faces. Well, by now you may or may not be. But God's going to give you an opportunity to be a testimony to somebody else that's coming. 
I wish I was more conscious of that when I was a younger man. I'm fairly conscious of it now. That my faith in God is going to speak to somebody else. And some of you dear people who you don't think anybody pays any attention to the valleys you go through, the struggles you've had, the burdens you carry, it's going to be a wonderful thing when in heaven it's revealed to us how we all influenced each other. And I, was, I was thinking about this today or yesterday, and I've, been, I've, been, I've grown up here since I was six years of age. Um, the Stanleys have been here like 70 or 80 years or something like that, 31 years. So many I see around the auditorium that, and I know there's others that aren't here tonight, that many that we grew up together. Um, a lot of my deacons are old enough to be my great, 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 great. I'm just kidding, just my great, 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 great. No, I grew up with their kids. Some of my teachers, I'm now their boss. Live right, and God will reward you, kids. <laughs> Live right, and there'll be blessings. All the motivation I need to give you right there. Oh, so you want a day off now? Oh, that, that's what it is. I'll give you some assignments on that day off. Anyway, here's the point I'm trying to make. This is the thought I had. God put us all here together as a church. We, how many lives do we have? We have one. And God's allowed us to live our life, our one life, together. He's allowed us to live our one life, influencing each other. You don't know how you're influencing somebody else. It would shock you. We don't do, we don't do it often. We just don't have the time and, and, and just... just we just don't do it often, but when, we, when there are times of testimony, there's always somebody surprised when somebody says, you were a blessing to me, or you, 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 I look to you in, in my low times, and what you went, always a surprise to somebody. Because your faith is a testimony to somebody else. So when that big thing that comes, you say, God, why, what, do you, what could you possibly be doing? I, I don't understand. I don't even know what that is. But the fear of God. Noah, uh, I don't know all what it means, but God said he's doing this, and I'm doing what he said, and I'm going to have the faith to do it, and it was, it's a testimony to other people. Let's use our testimony. Uh, to other people, uh, let's, don't, don't be a don't be a whiny don't be a whiny Christian. Oh man, God saved me and saved me from the flames of hell. I'm on my way to heaven, and isn't God good? Oh man, it's just so hard to. You may feel that way, but don't 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 feel don't show this world that. Your God's bigger than that. Let's have faith in Him. Let's have a testimony. Of faith. Father, help us tonight to have that kind of faith. 